Welcome. My name is Chris Kalis. I handle the operations at the ParasiteStore.com for Get Your Life Back LLC. Richard Cohns, with whom I work, is a chemical engineer who changed careers to operate a biofeed stress management facility. He also is the creator of many self-help programs at DeStressDoc.com. From his personal experience with skin parasites back in the 90s, he has gone on to become one of the foremost experts on the subject of Morgellons. He is the author of How to Get Your Life Back from Morgellons, Chronic Lyme Disease and Other Parasites now in its 8th revision. This is the first video of the three and it is about the first step to getting your life back from skin parasites. What is your book based on? Richard? The book is based on a diet and the diet is so super, so fantastic in dealing with skin parasites I call it the king diet because there's nothing better, you know, it's the top of the hierarchy. Where can I get your book? You can get the book on Amazon, you can get it on our website. Uh, for up until 2013 I sold the ebook for $19.95. Money back guarantee over 5,000 copies, and only two people have ever requested their money back. The good news is the ebook is now free. All you have to do is go to our main website at bestmorgallonscure.com, click on the little red box. That will take you to another page where you enter your name and your email address. You submit that, and within seconds, you'll receive an email with a link to download the book absolutely for free. And you'll get all the secrets of the diet. Why eight revisions to your book? We learn. If you also go to bestmorgallonscure.com, at the top you'll see a link to the blog. And as we learn, new entries are posted and updated. So the book becomes out of date like in a year. It's badly in need of a new revision right now. What kind of feedback do you get regarding from your readers? If you go to Amazon, you'll see that there are over about 140 re five-star reviews average. And it, it, read some of those comments. Uh, they'll tell you what to expect when you're working with my program. How did he get involved with Morgellons? Well, it wasn't on purpose, that's for sure. I was uh, in my backyard pulling some vines from a tree. Mm -hmm. These vines choked the tree. And as I pulled the vines down, I've done many times before, I, this cloud of dust, first time this ever happened, ascended uh, upon me. Mm -hmm. I didn't think much of it. I went in, showered, changed clothes. Four days later, my significant other and I, now she wasn't around this cloud of dust, so mm -hmm. I mean, when we're talking about things being contagious, you know, four late, uh, days later, at the same time, we both started itching like crazy. Mm -hmm. And from there on became an incredible search to find relief. The first things we had to do was to jump into a hot scalding bathtub to get some kind of temporary relief. She being a nurse went to the doctors that she worked with at the medical center. They prescribed different things. We tried them, they would work for three or four days and then itching would come back. Just as bad if not worse than before. We went through everything in the drugstore that we could find. Nick's rid everything that we could find. Things would work for three or four days and then nothing. I started going to doctors, plug samples taken, results came back negative. Well, long story short, at that time, 1996, I had no name for this thing. Mm -hmm. I suspected mites were involved and there were mites involved. So it wasn't until around 2002 that the name word Morgellons was coined. So all of us, I, of course I communicated by um, email with many people before that, and all of us suddenly thought, okay, we got Morgellons, that's what we got. We did have many of the symptoms, 
but not all of them, not the, not the critical ones, although some people did. So in the course of my experience, I have dealt with, personally, more gallons. I've de dealt with columbola, commonly known as springtails, mites, skin fungus, and experience with hot tub rash. So I've dealt with a gamut of all of them, and they're all, each dealt with differently, and it's uh, uh, specified in my book. And chapter three tells you how to deal with uh, each of the different types of organisms. Okay. What are the symptoms? With Morgellons, the crucial symptom, if you read Dr. Saverly's book, she, uh, it's about the legitimization of a disease, Morgellons, she mentions filaments. Instead of calling them fibers, which many people do, and you go to a doctor and a doctor says, ah, oh, that's just a cloth fiber, you know. So she differentiates and calls it filaments, which is fine. They are, can be seen uh, very easily by most people. They can be different colors. They come from the skin, grow from the skin, grow from lesions in the skin. Some people actually need to see, use a 300 power scope to see them. They can be also very fine. They're also fluorescent. So under a fluorescent light, you can also see them. Some people describe them as wiggly. Uh, many people don't see them visually, but they'll see an accumulation of lint-like substance in their bedding and clothing. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much uh, more gallons as they may not actually see them growing from the skin, but they do shed from the skin, and they accumulate into a lint-like substance. So that's the first thing. Now, along with it is an incredible itch that feels like it comes from underneath the skin, like you're sleeping on shards of glass. And it can be 24-7, mm -hmm. relentless. Along with that can be biting sensations that seem like it goes to the core of your bone. Mm -hmm. uh, incredible. And then as the condition progresses, we'll call it a condition for now, uh, you get into all kinds of other things. Uh, it can be lesions, non-healing lesions that can affect one's face or other parts of their body. Uh, organisms emanating from these lesions, and they can be, now all of these symptoms are not experienced by everyone. In fact, there are some people with Morgellons who have no lesions whatsoever on their skin or mm -hmm. on their body. But these things that emanate from the skin can be a variety. It can be a waspy-like cocoon kind of organism. It can be a worm-like organism. It can be uh, insect uh, uh, organisms. It, it can be uh, uh, plastic barbs, like uh, one fellow had a, like a, a plastic skeletal barb of half inch long. Another lady in Florida reports one three inches long coming from her skin. Uh, extremely difficult to get out of the skin. Mm -hmm. And then we go beyond that and you can get into uh, all kinds of health issues, uh, 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 distension of the stomach, uh, bloating, uh, with leaky gut uh, issues, uh, brain fog, memory issues, fibromyalgia, joint pain, uh, many uh, of these symptoms are typical with Lyme disease, which we will talk about later. Sure. Tell me more about the King's Diet. How did you discover it? Well, I tried everything under the sun, and garlic worked for a while. Mm -hmm. I handled my symptoms with garlic, but it got to the point where I needed to take 250,000 international units a day of garlic to keep things under control. It was horrendous. Every time I thought of ending my life because I saw no relief. On the internet, I'd find scant things. People would report, oh, I beat, I beat it, but they, no way of contacting them. No details on how they did it. And that's one of the reasons why I wrote my book, is I wanted to uh, put details in there, give you step by step. There's nothing unturned uh, about, in, uh, nothing left out when you read this book. What was your question again? Um, how did you discover it? So, the king being king. at the wit's end, someone suggested that there might be a dietary connection, which I first thought, well, that's stupid, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, what the heck? Mm -hmm. So, 
I ate nothing but eggs. Only eggs. No oil, no nothing. And thanks. I noticed symptoms had dissipated, completely gone away. So, wow, the little light bulb went off. There's maybe something connected here. So, if you look up um, elimination diet, the bottom line is to try different foods and eliminate the ones that uh, don't work and, and keep the ones that do work. So it became a lengthy process of about a year to figure out what foods fed these little monsters and what foods starved them mm -hmm. and what foods uh, allowed the symptoms to go to zero. In fact, many people over the years have used it and felt at time I thought I was cured. Mm -hmm. Now, there is no cure for mm -hmm. these uh, things. I, I want to put that, you know, and I'm not a doctor, and the FDA requires me to tell you that before you start my diet or accept any of my recommendations, that you are to clear them with your doctor to make sure they don't interfere with any health problems that you have. Mm -hmm. But so the diet is very precise. For instance, uh, a healthy food or a healthy oil like virgin olive oil, healthy in most diets, feeds these things. So, for instance, there are only three kinds of oil that you can have. Real butter, no substitutes, rice bran oil, and, believe it or not, lard. Anything beyond that will feed them. Cottonseed oil, canola soy oil, anything like other than that will feed them. And then when we look at uh, fruits and uh, uh, protein, we also have uh, uh, things that we can eat and things that uh, uh, feed them. Is the diet a cure? The diet is not a cure. In fact, there is no cure. But it helps alleviate the symptoms to the point where you feel that you may be cured. That's the incredible thing about it. So whatever your approach is, if you apply the diet, the chances of you being successful are far greater than if you didn't use the diet. Awesome. I look at it as the trunk of a tree. It's the essential thing to do. And there are many limbs, and my book goes into all the different limbs. Mm -hmm. Myself, personally, over the years, have narrowed down all those limbs to a specific protocol that I provide for free to anyone who is a, has interest. What is the difference between it and other healthy diets? The difference is that with other healthy diets, for instance, you can have uh, different nuts. You, uh, with this diet, you're limited in the type of nuts that you eat. So there, there are specific things that are like the candida diet. This is stricter than the candida diet, mm -hmm. and also is a fantastic candida diet. Mm -hmm. What is Morgellons disease? Depends on who you talk to. If you talk to the CDC, they'll tell you it's a problem that you have in your mind. It's stress-related or whatever. If you talk to people that have done research at uh, Morgellons Foundation, it's related with a uh, spirochete, uh, the Borrelia bungifort. They find and one research paper suggests that it creates the filaments. Mm -hmm. The spirochete has some instrumentally creates the filaments that cre uh, are composed of keratin and collagen. Uh, if you talk to other people, it's parasitic. So on one hand, it could be a disease very much related with Lyme disease. On the other hand, it genetically modifies organisms, as we talked about before, that uh, one gives birth to, whether it be mites or uh, bugs or worms or whatever. Mm -hmm. Are the skin parasites contagious? If you look at Dr. Saverly's book, she claims no. If you talk to the Morgallons Foundation, they claim no. If you talk to Dr. Carju, he claims no. I personally have given it to other people. I have hundreds of emails from people who contracted it from brothers, sisters. I have emails from people who have given it to their children, their grandchildren. So should I call them a liar? So can children get it? How about pets? Pets can get it. Children can get it. You can catch it from pets. You can give it to pets. 
Is the diet only thing one needs to be cured of Morgellons disease? Before we go on to that, to that, let's say it's highly contagious, but not to everyone or everything. Mm -hmm. Whether one person out of 10 is susceptible or one out of 50, I don't know. There are many cases where the wife is suffering dramatically and the husband shows no signs. Mm -hmm. This shows up very often. Now, uh, the cure, there is no cure. This is the, the diet is the first step. In my protocol, the next step, which we'll get into in the next video, is how to disinfect and how to clean your skin, uh, to get them out of your environment. They're organisms. You can't see them. That's the only problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, you have to eradicate them from your environment to keep them from reinfecting you. The diet gets them out of your skin and out of your, stops you from reproducing them and the, uh, uh, then you've got to get them out of the environment. And then the third aspect will be the supplements that bring your health back. Awesome. Thank you.